And we're here with Connor Ryan. Connor, what is up? Evan, I'm doing well. How you doing? Doing great, doing great. Nice warm day here in Boston. But obviously, we have uh, real things to just dive right into. Um, we we obviously touched on it for almost all of the last Poke the Bear, but this Mitchell Miller fiasco. And that fiasco came to an end, Sunday, or not an end, but uh, I guess the, you know, he's He's technically gone now. As of Sunday night, uh, the Bruins announced they were cutting ties um, with extremely controversial Mitchell Miller. Um, they had him signed as a Bruin for, was it 48 hours even? I mean, it was not long. Yeah, not not three full days, that's for sure. No. Uh, and Sunday night, that happens. And I mean, just what a weekend. What an unnecessary, stupid weekend. I mean, it, like, just out of left field, out of nowhere. Yeah, it's it's one of those ones where I don't know how you best sum it up. I don't think it's something where even, if, even in the moment or if we look at this a year or so in the future, if you have a way to sum up what this was in, like, 10 words or less, I don't think you could, right? Because it's no. just a complete catastrophic failure and you throw in any word you want because I think it all kind of fits the bill in terms of how the Bruins and their front office handle this is it ignorance is it incompetence is it a bit of both sure sounds like it and the way a lot this of whole thing was yeah um and it's just uh a stain on this organization this is a team that for for over you know for decades now has had a, a culture that's been cultivated by guys like Zidane Chara and Patrice Bergeron. It's a, a culture about respect and, and communication and being inclusive. You know, this is a room that Zidane Chara installed no hazing and no mistreatment of rookie players because it's something that he dealt with as a player growing up in Europe. Um, and to then have this culture they've worked so hard to build kind of get sullied immediately off of a ridiculous um ridiculous plan uh you know short-sighted um measure by this front office staff where whatever half-assed excuse of due diligence they they said they were going to have clearly fell short when honestly if i think any sane person with common sense would look at what's maybe the first thing to do is is call you know the victim's family in this case and call isaiah's family and get you know their side of this story which again the Bruins, even in the first statement, mentioned it as an isolated incident. All it takes is one uh, in-depth story from the Arizona Republic or court documents or any of these things. It takes four seconds, not even four seconds, on Google to find up all this information. It's just gross negligence. It's stupidity. It's all those things wrapped up into what is ultimately just a ugly and pointless couple of days for this team. Pointless is the main word. I mean, again, I, I don't understand. Do these Bruins, does this Bruins front office think that it's some junior team out in Montana. Like you're an original six franchise in the national hockey league. You, I, I mean, you are at the top of the league. You're 10 and one. Why, why any of this? And again, I mean, we'll get into Cam Neely's comments in a second here. Um, but the takeaway I had was this was a colossal ball drop. I mean, this was as big, a just, fuck up as you can have for lack of a better term like yes. this is as bad as it gets that, that's 10 words or less massive colossal, fuck up. colossal fuck up sorry for the language but again like that is what this was and this was again not doing due diligence uh no vetting like again they said they did all their homework and part of me almost thought over the weekend, like, oh, there's got to be something else to come out here. Like, there's going to be something, not, not like, not good. I don't, I mean, like, something else is going to, like, they're going to come out with something, like, all these things he did. And then they tried, and then wasn't it, like, uh, it was something, like, it was court-ordered stuff? I, I don't know the full details on it, so yeah, I'm not going to, like, was... share it if it's not true. But, I mean, it was just, like, it was nonsense. It's every single thing got worse and worse for this team and just continued to make them look worse and worse in terms in of two days in yeah, like in, in two yeah. days, this thing just exploded. I, I don't, yeah, again, no, it, and that, and, and that's the thing, like the fact that they couldn't even get a, that they could not, that, that, that they signed this dude. And then two days later had to just send him back because they did not do any of their homework again. 
We said it from the jump. This was a horrible decision. This was stupid. This kid clearly has some serious issues and shouldn't be near an NHL dressing room at the moment. Um, and again, that's something that, you know, said was, oh, what about second chances? And it's like, well, would you take a look at the situation here? Would you just yeah. look at it? Like, this is not this is not a typical situation. Most people didn't do this at the age of 14 years old. And and I would hope most, if, if anyone had done that, they would show some remorse, which clearly there wasn't in this situation. Um, yeah. it's, and it's I'm surprised they didn't see that. It's just ugly all around, right? When you look at the severity of, of uh, these actions that, again, uh, Mitchell Miller was literally like convicted of, like in juvenile court, of these things. Like these things. Oh yeah, happened. no, this is factual. This is not you like have, you have hearsay. that. You have that. You have again the lack of remorse in terms of again. Maybe if the Bruins took the five minutes to call Joni Meyer Crothers and ask her about these things, we didn't find out that there was little to no sense of remorse. The only thing he reached out to him about was on Instagram, and it was the thing that he said had n- no. Uh, nothing related to hockey in terms of why he wanted to apologize. For just happened to be GM. last week, right? Just yeah, when, when NHL contract offers were on the table. Um, between that, the fact that the Bruins also paid this guy a like the maximum salary in terms of signing bonuses for an AHL player, the lack of follow up to the family, which just it blows my mind. It's one of those things where it just feels like almost like. Th- you can't even like wrap your head around it in terms of how much of a colossal fuck up this is, Evan. Like in terms of it, the logic no. applied here and the lack of checks and balances and the chain of command here, like makes my brain want to f- like drain out through my eyes because it, it literally doesn't have any sense of cohesion, fi- you know, fiscal sense, uh, business responsibility, any of these things in terms of. You know, between that, the lack of communication with the league, the lack of communication with the players and taking them for their word when they clearly were not about this, um, the lack of sponsors, the not anticipating the amount of fan blowback there was going to be, which, you know, well, I'm sure we'll dive into this in terms of Neely's comments, but the, not expecting this kind of response in this market with all that's mapped out there, right? This isn't, as you said, a situation where we kind of knew some of the details and then more things kind of crept up. This was cut and dry. They had court documents. They had literally testimony. They had a full investigation that was so bad that the, the Arizona Coyotes, a franchise that is literally playing in a college bond right now with less seats than Connie Forum and Aganis, was like, we can't fucking touch this guy. All that was mapped out there, and no one on the Bruins had to do the bare minimum to vet this guy. Embarrassing. It I want to get embarrassing. To... It's completely embarrassing. I want to get, I want to just first transition to our, our athletic green sponsor. Cause I know I want to get into kind of the full depths of Cam Neely's comments in a sec. Uh, our next partner, by the way, is a product I use every day started taking AG one because I wanted better gut health and more energy. Uh, I don't drink coffee or use caffeine because I wanted healthier, natural energy and AG one is from providing it in droves. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy or anything either. It has a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to each and every morning. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75, yes, 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source ingredients, probiotics, and adaptions to help you start your day right. Special blend of ingredients, support your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, and aging. All the things you could ever want. It's lifestyle-friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, contains less than a gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything, while still tasting really good. This all supports better sleep quality and mental clarity. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just a single cup, a, sing, a single scoop, excuse me, in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, because we're all about making things easy, Connor. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs for the first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com backslash Bruins. Again, that's athleticgreens.com backslash Bruins. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So pick right back up where we left off. Um, You hit on it actually at the end there. That they didn't expect the blowback. That they didn't expect blowback. And I just have a real, that goes, if if anything Cam Neely said makes you, kind of indicates that this front office might be a tad out of touch. It is that in spades. To think that in 2022, you can announce in maybe the biggest sports media market in the country, Boston, Massachusetts, obviously there's New York, there's LA, there's you know St. Louis and Chicago, whatever. Boston is on its own. <laughs> to think that you can announce this here and not experience blowback, where by the way, there are how many people who cover the team every day? There's probably what, like 15-ish? So you have mm-hmm. like... 
basically, you know, 10 to 12 different outlets there every day. Then you have on top of that all the TV stations with investigative reporters and different newspapers with investigative reporters who took the time Friday and this weekend to reach out to family members and, and do the due diligence that the Bruins didn't do. And I find that fascinating that in the city of Boston, with the sports market, with the, the reporters here, with, with the fan engagement, you would think, well, we might have some blowback, but I'm, I'm pretty shocked we had this amount of blowback. I mean, that is as out of touch a statement as I have heard in so long. Unbelievably stupid on their part. Yeah, I, I ju- it's just one of those things where I don't know how you look at this this market and, and the way, you know, the amount of press that's covered. And even though the Bruins are uh, probably fourth on the pecking order, right, in terms of the city, still an original six franchise, still has a rabid, passionate fan base that gives a shit about their team. And it's something that it's honestly kind of uh, one thing that I think was not good to get out of this whole scenario. It's far from this whole thing sucks. Like no one comes out good in this, but in terms of the response from the fans, and of course you have the occasional people who talk about, well, he was 14 or any of this other horse shit argument, which again, you're telling on yourself if you want to be the well actually guy in this, that's all I'll say there. But uh, for the amount of fans who immediately felt sick to their stomach, the amount of fans who reached out, you know, talking about canceling their tickets, the fact that the fan relations email was pretty much sending auto replies back because they had so yes. much traffic. Um, you think there's people the inquiring of, just about season tickets? You think there's something no, that happened? Far from it, right? And it's something where, you know, you look at this this market, it's the one thing that I appreciate, uh, you know, Bruins fans or even people in the Boston, New England area is that they're have a pretty good moral compass, I would say, and they're very quickly to denounce bullshit when they see it, and this was bullshit, right? And so uh, that was, I think, it's good for Bruins fans to, I think, collectively as a group, all things considered, uh, take a stand and denounce this. And if you're shocked by this, if you're front office, then you apparently don't know your fan base very well in, in terms of this, because I don't know how you could see this being something where, you know, I think Neil even said, well, we expected some people to be like, you know, upset, but, you know, other people would be like, well, he deserves a second chance. How is it when you have all this information out there, all all the, you know, documents we have readily available? This is not something that you had to send in a, uh, you know, FOIA request or anything like that, right, to, to get information. This has all been mapped out here. How is it that you think that these fans that are this passionate about this team would not have this stuff readily available? And it goes beyond – the awful actions he's done or the fact that for Bruins fans, this is just bad publicity and, you know, a, a, a current stain on the organization. It goes against the identity of this team, right? You've got a, a team that has always preached about inclusion and uh, building, you know, ties in the community. It's something that has been built from the players themselves that they give a shit about that they've worked so hard to. And you don't think this, which completely is a blight against all that, was going to pass over and not be something that is going to be a thorn in the side of the fans. It just means you're so out of touch with your fan base, which if you're an original six team, a team in this market, it's, it defies logic amongst the many other things uh, that the Bruins did over this. It's not understanding your fan base, which if you don't know that, holy shit, guys, like I, I don't know how else to put it. Right. And you don't listen to your dressing room. And that's the other part of this. I mean, again, we talked about the culture that's been built there. And I don't think, by the way, I, 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 you know, it's funny. We talk about the Bruins looking bad in this. The players don't, in my eyes. I think the players have actually looked pretty good in this whole thing and in, in, in speaking out as much as they can. I think, you know, some people want Patrice Bergeron to come out and, you know, be like, what the hell were they doing? Like, you can't, you can't do that. Unfor- as the captain of the team, you do have to, I guess, kind of toe that line. Um but again, the players spoke again on Monday. You were there and, and Marsh in and, and you know, Bergeron said this was a, a distraction to them. Um, they admitted that nobody wanted this. You know, they 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 said that to the front office. Nick Felino was as outspoken as anybody was over the weekend in Toronto, um, being very forthright about the fact yeah. that they didn't want this. Yeah. Um, it's, and to, it's also oh, sorry. No, I don't want to cut you off. No, Go. continue. No, you no, because I was cutting to my end there. I was getting to cut it to you. No, I was going to say, I think a guy like Felino especially deserves, deserves a lot of credit for being as forthcoming and, and candid as he was, because it's one thing to have people on social media speak up about this. Another thing to have fans, you know, flood an email thing. Uh, but also when it's the players themselves who are like, this goes against what we stand for. That ramps up the pressure to in our front office and realize it. Hmm, maybe we kind of fucked this up because you know what they did? They really kind of fucked this up, Evan. Crazy, crazy how that worked. 
I, I and I here's here's what concerns me uh, as well. Cam Neely mentioned this got brought to his attention in August, right? He, mm-hmm. he heard about this in August. Uh, we don't quite know if this was kicked around prior to that. I would imagine it must have been. Um, again, I don't want to start spouting stuff that you know is just kind of we don't know. But again, let's set August as the date, right? August, September, October. You had over three months. If you were really considering this, right, you had over three months to do all the vetting you needed. In that three months, what did you do about this kid? If you were, if you wanted to sign him, right, how, where, where was any moral compass, A, B, did anyone think to reach out to the victim and his family? Like, th- did that just escape? Was you know, like, and that's, again, that speaks to a larger issue here that we'll get to in a second with this front office. And I think many front offices, um, because again, like you had, uh, I believe Mark Diver tweeted out uh, a scout said to him, Oh, I wish my team, you know, signed him. And, and you have a, a, an executive telling Kevin Paul DuPont that, you know, Oh, if this was a smaller market, it would have worked. And it's like, well, it didn't work in Arizona. And that's what, like, again, I just don't under, is there a disconnect? And, and just to, to get back to my point, they had since August and, they clearly didn't do shit when vetting him. It, all it took was one phone call. You look at a lot of the co- my colleagues, even in this market, have all gotten in touch with Joni Maya Crothers uh, multiple times to get her opinion on this. And she's been very candid about the struggles that Isaiah is facing. Um, all, all it would have taken was one phone call, Evan, which is the, the worst part of this. You had months to look up this guy. The one basic thing you couldn't do, the first thing I think that anyone would do in terms of due diligence, reach out to the victim and see how he's impacted them. You say this is an isolated incident, call the call the family then and see see how it is. Because you listen to some of the stuff that um, Joni Meyer Crothers has talked about, uh, it makes you sick to your stomach beyond the stuff that we already know in terms of what Isaiah went through for years. You know, you look at now that now it's getting brought back up and how upset he is. Um, you look at, you know, Joni mentioned that, uh, he was, had times where he had severe anxiety attacks or, or panic attacks. You know, there's times where he's been treated for depression and wake of this, like, this is something that Mitchell Miller has ruined Isaiah's life. And now it's being brought up. And the fact that you couldn't take the two minutes, two minutes to call and get this stuff is just negligent. It's disgusting. It's idiotic. It makes the Bruins organization look like a clown show in terms of how they handle this. And again, all this should have been avoided. It should have been a two-minute phone call, been like, Jesus Christ, no, we cannot have this guy in our organization. He should have been snuffed out then and there. Now, to get to this point where you've got egg on your face and you're trying to retract it, and that's the worst thing about this whole thing, Evan. The Bruins uh, cut ties with him. Damage is already done. Like, this was not the right move to make. This was the only move to make at this point. But the damage is now done. Congrats, oh, yeah, guys. No. Good job. Oh, I- idiotic on, le- again, I-, I think we're still, th- the dust has not settled on this yet. So we're still kind of caught in the fog of this whole thing where it's like, holy crap. Like, you didn't have to touch this at all. I think it was Fluto who asked Sweeney on Friday and said, you could have easily just not done this. Why did you do it? And I remember it was even weird on Friday. Sweeney saying, you know, this might be the wrong move. Why would you ever do this? Like that, that's the part. Why would you ever do this? And it... again, I don't want to hear, and this is the other thing, right? Like, and people say, well, you look at what he's done on the ice. And I, I look fine, you know, solid hockey player. As I said on Friday, he's, this is not a top 20 talent, but he, okay. Maybe he might be pretty good. He was good in the USHL. Fine, whatever. Right. But why, why would you, he has not earned the right or the privilege to play in the national hockey league. And why as an original six franchise with this incredible culture, allegedly, are you inviting him in? I, I mean, again, we're, we're circling the wagon here, but why? Like, I just, there's just no explanation for it. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and also, it's, it's as, also the flawed thing of being like, well, he's not had a second chance for anything because he does he going to be vetted and now be criticized for every job he takes? No. But as you said, it's a privilege to play in the National Hockey League. He just signed a AHL contract, an ELC with a signing bonus. So he just got six figures like that. Oh, like, there's a difference between a sign of a having, pen. yeah, he has a difference between like getting another job and learning from your mistakes and redeeming yourself and being a functioning member of society and not an asshole 
and being given the right to play pro hockey and get six figures, if not more, like that off of a max signing contract off an ELC deal. That's Big difference. Under, that's what I understand. Is people saying, oh, you want to cancel a 14-year-old, a kid for 14? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Ready? If he wants to go work a job or something like that, f- like, fine. But to play in the National Hockey League and make hundreds of thousands of dollars in a day and, you know, off that contract or make potentially millions down the road and be this 20-year-old kid who has shown zero remorse. I, I, again, I just, where is the proof that this kid is bettered? What did, like, that's what I don't understand. That's why I think the, the, the and, and I join everybody else in this, that that vetting process was a load of crap because there is, there is no proof so far in this whole thing. Um, you have this incredible, just like bigger than a mistake because you had, this was not like a, oh, like this was a split second thing. We only had 30 seconds to make this call. You had months to do this, um, months and I don't, again, don't know how you didn't think of the business end of it, the fans being angry, uh, what this would mean for the dressing room and and the players. I I, I just I don't understand that at all. Um, but you know you have your players again speaking out. But what does this mean for the future of this front office? Because again, this in any other business would be fireable. You create a just a public fiasco to this level, you're gone. I mean, that's not even like this was. You know, you're done. Incompetence. Um, but it doesn't feel like that's going to happen here, at least so far. I mean, again, we don't know what could happen. Cam Neely says he's going to look into everything. Maybe the ownership gets involved. I don't know. Again, this we're, the dust is still settling. Nothing is finished yet. Um, but I mean, again, maybe this doesn't even matter because this is such a bigger thing. But I look and say, if the front office can't properly vet someone, do you trust them to do anything? It's like really concerning now when you look at, you know, there's a lot of inner workings of a sports franchise that I think pe- people don't definitely don't take for granted, but they, they do know there's a bigger, you know, gears behind the machine and the process goes into it. But you also hope, even if you disagree with, let's say, a trade or a free agent signing, whatever, that you generally have a chain of command and some common, you know, common people working behind the scenes. After a thing like this, where there should have been 18, you know, bumps in the road where you should have stopped and done the time to vet this player. A hundred bumps in the road. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) How do you, how do you feel, how do you feel like this team has its shit together right now in terms of something like that? Like it just, it's not something where it was, yeah, you missed like a, a tweet from a player when they said something in four at 14, this is an established proven thing a a string a pattern years long of of abuse with no evidence or proof of you know remorse or anything like that until an nhl contract was dangled in front of them you look at the fact they did this they talked to the leadership group of clearly didn't carry their wishes you look at also the fact they announced this before the bruins went up to toronto like there's just so many things that go into this like small little details that melt your brain like i just can't find a new dude if i wanted to like fully break this down it would take three hours and i would literally pass out in terms you have to of write a the, book yeah in terms of how colossal of a disaster this is in terms of and again who knows what exactly happens you have to feel like there's going to be some heads that have to roll off of something this colossal of a fuck up but we'll see whether that means ownership gets involved or what because right now friends been stained man like they don't look good and this is something that again we say it's Bruins fans love to dig on Tony D'Angelo and the teams that are dipshits enough to sign him even if he's a good player well you're gonna get lumped into that now and yes you didn't he didn't play a game you're gonna get lumped into that people are gonna call you out on that you know what it's well deserved because you invited that criticism and that shitstorm of your own doing so this is what you're stuck with and this is not just beyond your own fans being disappointed. It's how the Bruins are perceived nationally, uh, sponsors, all this stuff. But like, there are a long standing consequences that are going to come out of what was a two and a half day debacle. And they didn't even consult the league. Like that. Also, that. Yeah, that's very yeah, important like, too. Huh? It's just insanity to me. Um, but I mean, again, even you look at like, okay, so we talk about this every week. David Poshnok's not signed yet, right? And again, in the grand scheme of things, we're going back to hockey here. Div Postrock's not signed yet, right? And we feel as if part of the reason there's a holdup is he doesn't love the direction of the team. And again, maybe we're looking too far into things, but again, the money, they don't seem to have the money issue. It seems to be, he's kind of wondering what the future might look like. Uh, how do you think he feels now? Again, we've not heard from David Postrock yet. 
But the reality is I would imagine the the level of confidence, the, the confidence level is not very high given that this happened. I mean, I just like, and again, even this, like, you know, prior to Friday, and I know people might be like, you know, shut up, but Sweeney was having a fairly good start to the year, right? Lindholm was was killing it as a number one defenseman. That was a trade he made. Olmark was the number one goalie. That was a signing he made. Felino was was coming into his own, all these different things. And and now that's all come crashing down because of this, because of just the most weird, stupid, wrong, everything move you could possibly make for no reason. That's the so again, I just I, I don't know. I, you know, I think a lot of fans are saying fire Sweeney, fire Neely. We'll see what they end up doing. I just I'm just still shocked that this happened. And to this degree. I mean, we've hit on all the things. And again, I mean, I don't know how you can trust in their chain of command now. Maybe this, inst- again, you'd have to think heads will roll on this. Like there will be firings, I would imagine. But, you know, does this, do they institute, you know, a set, more set chain of command? Do they institute people who have morals? Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I just, it blows my mind, Connor. My roommates have been listening to me all weekend. Just be like, what the fuck? And I think, this, and again, we started to use the F word a thousand times in this show, but like, that's, that's what's what gets. I mean, like, seriously. Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, what do you think happens? I know this is like, these are our predictions. Like, I don't know. These are kind of bad predictions to have, but like, what do you think happens? No, I mean, I think there has to be repercussions somewhere, whether it's in, the scouting department or or what? Something that there was multiple failings at multiple levels in terms of who identified the player, who vouched for him, you know, showing remorse and, and wanting to, you know, build on himself beyond just the fact that he was going to get promised a contract. You got to look at who allowed this process to go from exploring his viability as a prospect, maybe in the summertime to, to where we are now or where we were two days ago, um, there's just multiple failings. And you look at, at the end of the day, as you said, it's tough to like gauge what exactly it is because it feels like the dust hasn't settled. Like I don't expect it to be a thing where every sponsor is going to be dropping the ruins, but I'm sure there's a lot of people who are really pissed. Like I'm sure all these sponsors that have invested a lot of money and have seen this team, they've invested a lot of money and get dragged through the mud, again, of their own doing. It's just, you have to wait, I think, maybe for more of the dust to settle here, but there has to be some consequences. This can't be something where, you know, you you take one on the chin if you're the Bruins, you admit to, the, you know, messing up, and then it just it gets forgotten. Like, I don't think that's going to be the case. I also think, like, again, you look at, I guess, what Miller may have projected to be on the ice, right? Like, at his best, maybe he's like a 40 or 50 point defenseman someday, right? N- not anytime soon. That was clear, but like, you know, years down the road, is that worth, like, did anyone ever think, Hey, is this worth the, 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 the business, uh, that this is going to hurt us with? Is this worth the fans being angry at us? Is this worth just the backlash and the shit that it's going to stir in the dressing room? No one thought that obviously no one ever, like that never entered anybody's mind in that front office. At least it seems to me, but I, I mean, it just, that's why Connor, it blows my mind. Like, if you had said to me on Thursday that this would, I'd be like, you're an idiot. Like, shut, shut, shut up. Like, no way. They're going to Toronto. They'll go to St. Louis. Good road trip. We'll talk about those things. But this, like, I, that's why it's still like, it's just insane to me. Um, and again, like we talked over the off season about the future of Don Sweeney. We we've done this, you know, for like a year now. And you know, we all, you know, it's like, oh, you know, the, this move wasn't great. That move wasn't great. Yeah, at some point, it'd probably be good to get a new voice in there. It seems like they need it, whatever. This is just on a different, this is like incompetence, right? Like this, you know, you can make fun of the 2015 draft all you want. Uh, This is, this is actual incompetence. This is absurdity. Um, And so, I mean, again, I, I, again, I don't know what ends up happening from it. Uh, I, again, as you said, I think heads will probably roll in some capacity. I think you have to find the people who, I would imagine in any normal organization, you would put a task force together for a kid like this and say, hey, uh, you go vet this kid fully, find out everything they've done, look through everything. And I guess those are the people that you would target if our heads are to roll. 
again, not rooting for anybody to be fired, but this is fireable. This is completely fireable. So um, I think we hit on everything we could possibly hit on with this. Do you have any leftover thoughts that we haven't touched? No, I mean, I think, again, as you said, it's something that we have to wait for even more of the dust to settle because, yeah, he might have, you know, the Bruins said they're going to cut ties, but I feel like there's a lot of probably legal maneuvering that comes with how you handle this contract. I would not be surprised if the NHLPA gets involved. We, I'm sure Gary Bettman and Bill Daly have not given their final thoughts on this. Uh, it's, there's a, still a whole bunch more left to unpack out of this. And, again, I think it just harkens back to the fact that the damage is still done. You're, you've moved on from the player, but this – Stain's going to be tough to get out because it's it was just a complete fumbling by this team in terms of how to handle this and not knowing your fan base, not knowing what the repercussions were going to be, and they got to pay for it now. Oh, yeah. I, again, that just doesn't make any sense to me. As you said, like Ty Anderson even tweeted, like this could potentially be a, a court case like at some point. Like this, you know, over the contract, not the move, but over the contract. Um, And again, I mean, you just... I go back to, you know, my last thought, one thing that I didn't really get to touch on that I know you did was, again, like, my guess is, and this is not informed, but my guess is sponsors probably reached out this weekend and said, what are you guys doing? We're going to pull if 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 this kid skates a second for anybody affiliated with you. Um, because as, as everybody knows, it all comes down to the dollar signs. I wouldn't be surprised if that had a huge impact on it. Um, anyways, Connor, uh, on a on a better note, what can people look forward to over from you at BSJ? Yeah, we'll have you covered every step of the way as the season goes on, um, whether it be, uh, again, more news from this ongoing development, game reports, features, columns, all that stuff will be over at bostonsportsjournal.com. So please subscribe over at BSJ. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can at Connor Ryan underscore 93. Go do all that. For CLNS Media, I'm Evan Marinofsky. Bruins Pete listeners, have a great rest of your week.